Cancer screening offers hope that cancer that would ultimately become metastatic can be detected in an early phase when it's amenable to treatment. This hope is based on Halstead's theory that cancer arises and grows at a single location before migrating to local lymph nodes and then on to more distant organs. But research suggests that some cancers may already be metastatic by the time they're detectable. I'm Stephen Morrissey, Managing Editor of the New England Journal of Medicine, and I'm talking with Gilbert Welch, a professor of medicine at the Dartmouth Institute of Health Policy and Clinical Practice. Dr. Welch has co-authored a perspective article about trends in metastatic breast and prostate cancer and what they reveal about cancer dynamics. Dr. Welch, can you tell us a bit about the origin of current cancer screening programs? How much do they rely on the Halsteadian paradigm of cancer progression? I think, in fact, they rely on it quite heavily. They may not explicitly articulate that they're depending on the Halsteadian progression, but certainly the idea is that cancers are relentlessly growing. They're doing so in sort of a progressive manner, and that the idea of screening is to find it at an earlier, more treatable stage before it becomes metastatic. So according to a competing theory from Bernard Fisher, certain cancers are already systemic by the time they can be detected. So is there hope that new diagnostic tools could expand that detection window enough for some of those cancers to be treatable? I think the real important idea here is there's just a lot of heterogeneity in what we call cancer. And that's been something that's actually been recognized for years. Bernard Fisher was, of course, very important in that in breast cancer. But even in the 50s, doctors were aware that cancer was a broad spectrum of diseases. And it's been described as the problem of birds, rabbits, and turtles. And the birds are the fastest growing, most aggressive cancers that are already systemic by the time they're detectable. The rabbits are hopping around and are progressing and follow more of the Halsteadian model, and that's where early diagnosis would arguably have its best effect. And then there are the turtles, and they're the cancers that aren't going anywhere anyway, and they're the cancers, unfortunately, the screening's very good at finding. So the issue about the heterogeneity of cancer is that it really does impact the effects, both positive and negative, of screening. And that's why it's so important to fully understand the natural history of cancers as we look for very early forms. Looking specifically at prostate cancer, prostate cancer destined to become metastatic appears to fit the Halsteadian paradigm, given that PSA screening can detect an earlier stage. So What's missing from that screening that we can't seem to consistently reduce mortality? I think uh, the prostate cancer story is a little bit more complex. In fact, we do see a dramatic decline in the incidence of metastatic prostate cancer, suggesting the PSA combined with the systematic biopsy strategy that's really unique to prostate cancer. You're not just biopsying a single abnormality. You're doing a systematic series of cores, typically 10 to 12, But that process has been able to find prostate cancer destined to become metastatic at an earlier stage. But we're careful to say this should not be seen as necessarily an endorsement of prostate cancer screening because there is evidence that even advancing the time of metastatic prostate cancer may not translate or doesn't reliably translate into lower mortality. And the European randomized trials showed that while screening can almost half the amount of metastatic prostate cancer presentation, it only reduced the risk of death from prostate cancer by one-fifth. Now, no one's sure exactly why that is, but it probably means that some cancers that are apparently localized nonetheless have micrometastases. And the other thing we note is the incidence of metastatic prostate cancer declined in half. It's now stabilized over the last five or six years, which also suggests there may be another portion of prostate cancers that is clearly metastatic at presentation. You spoke about the heterogeneity of cancers, and in your article you talk about a third paradigm proposed by Samuel Hellman, that within a single type of cancer, aggressive, poorly differentiated cancers tend toward the Fisher paradigm, and localized, well-differentiated cancers tend toward the Halsteadian. Do we know anything about what might cause certain cancers to follow one pathway or the other? I think this is an area of active research. I'm not sure I can comment on it with any clarity, but it's clearly more than simply the genetics of the cancer, so something about the host interaction. So some cancer biologists are now kind of considering the whole ecology of cancer, not just the cancer itself, but the host that it lives in. 
But this more combined view of the Halstead and the Fisher view that Hellman proposed, I think, is, of course, very sensible. And it does reflect this tremendous heterogeneity of the abnormalities that we label as cancer. And as I said, it's a heterogeneity that some doctors have been aware about for years. Let me share with you a quote from Dr. George Cryle, a cancer surgeon from the Cleveland Clinic, writing in 1955 in Life magazine. He writes, in clinical practice, to say that a person has cancer gives us little information about the possible course of his disease as to say that he has an infection. There are dangerous infections that may be fatal, and there are harmless infections that are self-limited and may disappear. The same is true of cancer. Cancer is not a single entity. It is a broad spectrum of diseases related to each other only in name. So physicians have been aware of the heterogeneity of cancer for decades. But it has really important implications as we think about early detections. And we have to be clear that we understand this heterogeneity before thinking that looking for all forms of cancer early is necessarily going to help people more than it hurts them. Is it possible to make screening more effective or more efficient given what's known now about cancer dynamics, or do we need further research? I think so. I think one thing that we probably ought to do more of is make use of the diagnostic value of time. And this was really the systematic efforts at lung cancer screening for really small abnormalities, instead of immediately biopsying, the protocols called for watching small abnormalities to see if they grow. That's a very sort of pragmatic piece of information that I believe sort of combines the tumor genetics with the host response and gives you a very phenotypic answer to the question of, is this an abnormality that is progressing? Thank you, Dr. Welch.